Um, I feel like the main thing that I changed was uh, my, my mentality. I feel like the way I, I thought about things, the way I approached different situations, I feel like that's the main thing I changed coming from that year and coming from last year. Um, like I said, last year I came in with more confidence. Um, I, I enjoy actually being out there and, you know, the main thing was before that, you know, I was getting too concerned about stats and or where I was going to be or what I wanted to accomplish instead of, you know, being more focused on how to help this team win, uh, how to get to the playoffs, how to get to the Super Bowl, how to just how just win, uh, be selfless. Um, I feel like that's the mindset I changed and going into this year, I just came, I kept that same mindset. Um, Focus on uh, my weaknesses going into this year, so I can, like I said, I can find any way to help this team win. Because I feel like we have everything. Literally, we have everything that we could possibly want, you know, on the team to be able to get to where we want to be at, and that's that Super Bowl and, and bringing it back home. So, my main mindset is right now just focus on this team, uh, finding ways to win, and you know, just getting better at all my weaknesses, so I don't have to focus on them going through the season. All right, John Boyle. Yeah, I guess to follow up on that, you said your weaknesses. What what do you want to improve upon coming off a of Pro Bowl year? Uh, being more consistent uh, with my press technique and then getting the ball. Um, I feel like last year I got my hands on a lot of balls where I was just able to just punch it out. But now I want to get to a point where them same passes I'm breaking up, I'm catching them. You know, uh, I'm not dropping them. Uh, just making, you know, the most out of my, out of my opportunity, should I say? So uh, when the ball comes to me, I need to be able to catch it. So uh, I don't know. I can't even tell you how many passes and balls I caught all this off season. But you know, I'm, I'm hoping it comes and it shows. Uh, but that's the main thing. I want to be more conditioned uh, when it comes to being consistent in my press coverage. So when I do get fatigued, you know, my technique, it starts to stand out a lot more so people see that. And um, just getting a ball in my hand. You know, it's cool to have over 15 pass breakups, but you have 15 pass breakups and maybe four or five interceptions. It's a really good year. So, you know, I just want to get the ball in my hands. And, you know, if I can do that, I know for a fact, you know, getting that, that ball back in number three hands, he's going to do some special things. So. That's what I'm gonna focus on. Focus on getting the ball back to him and letting our offense do what they always do and they do great. So that's my main thing. If that's gonna help the team win, getting the ball in his hands, I'm gonna focus on getting the ball more. All right, Corbin. Hi, Shaquille. Uh, you mentioned this earlier in the offseason as part of your progression as a player, you were hoping to potentially move around a little bit from your left cornerback position. Mm -hmm. Have the coaches talked to you at all about potentially doing that? And do you see the addition of Quentin Dunbar as, as along with Jamal Adams potentially helping you being able to move around the field a bit this year? Yeah, it's something we haven't talked about, but um, I feel like the thing that uh, we do well here, uh, the coaches believe in all the players we have. When it comes to me or Trey Flowers or getting Quentin Dunbar, Jamal Allen, these guys, the main thing is they trust they trust us as a defense. And uh, when, I, when I'm saying that, I feel like there's no need for me to travel unless it's some situations where we have to make an adjustment. But besides that, there's nothing that we had to talk about because our, our defense, you know, our offense, our coaches, everybody trusts the players that's on the field, uh, no matter who's out there, that we can make this work. We're going to make this happen no matter who's guarding who. So that's the cool part about it. And we got some cool pieces added onto it. Like I said, Quinn Dunbar now, Jamal Adams, some pieces that, that's going to change our defense in the long run. And we still got some great guys here. You know, you talk about me, you still got uh, Kwanjay Dead, Marquise Blair, Trey Flowers, you got Nico Thor. We got so many great guys to kind of just wrap this around. You know, we've been looking for the, the best secondary, and I feel like we finally have that. And that's the cool thing to say. You know, we're still working with each other, learning each other, and that, that's just the, it's a cool process to be a part of. So um, haven't talked much about it, but at this point, I feel like it may not, it may, no need for it. You know, we got all the guys that we need. And uh, we can make it work no matter who's out there. They're going to be able to get, uh, be guarded. We're going to make it work. And it's just, this defense is going to stand out this year. All right, Ben. Uh, what's up, what's up? My question, uh, you know, obviously, you know, this is the last year of your rookie deal. Is uh, your contract something uh, you, you've been thinking about at all? Like, how have you kind of approached that? And is that something? Uh, you think would get done sooner rather than later? Um, spoke about it with my agent, but um, I, I feel like that was a really uh, s short subject. Um, I never wanted to get to the point where I played ball when it, when it came to uh, the money, so I didn't want to keep that focus on that. So like I said, the main thing is just trying to find ways to win, and it's going to play itself out. Uh, the main thing is that uh, the coaches, the organization, they know I love it here. Uh, I feel like that's very noticeable. Uh, I would love to be here you know, as long as I can, if not forever. But at the end of the day, like I said, they're going to work itself out. The only thing I can focus on is the next day, the next play. So uh, and that's helping my team win. 
I've never really been big on, you know, the contract and things like that because it's always going to play itself out. Whatever's, whatever's going to be ready for me is going to be there. So um, right now I'm just focused on the things I can focus on. So, And I feel like that's the best way to keep your mind focused because when you get to – I've seen a lot of players get too caught up in, okay, I want to get paid a lot. And they, they don't play the same. It's not about that. You ain't start playing this game for the money. You play it because you love it. So my main focus on is playing this game the same reason why I started. I love this game so much. It's the reason why I play it, and I, and I love winning. So that's my main focus, and the contract going to play itself out, and hopefully I'm still here, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, hey, Michael, Sean? Hey, what's up, Shaq? Um, what do? No, the, the other day, or you were drafted with Lena, mm -hmm. T2, Mike, yeah, it was you. It was you four, and there was a lot of talk about like you guys being the new era of the the secondary for the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since then, and now it looks like it's going to be you. You know the guys you have now. Yeah. Um. Just what have the last like three years been like? And does it feel like you know that was just the the other day that it was the four of y'all yeah. in the future? It's been a roller coaster. I can say that. Um. You know, especially being a rookie, you come in. You make friends fast, you know, you get close to a lot of people. And the guys you name, I'm really, really close with, like my brothers, you know. And and we always thought, we, we had that same thought. The way people were thinking, like, this could be the new era. We all thought the same thing, you know, young and, you know, but now we notice things don't play out like it, it may, like, you know, what most people think about. And and it's cool because, you know, things happen. And I feel like, you know, T2 getting picked up, I feel like he's in a perfect situation. You no, know, just talking to Mike Tyson. He's still working out, waiting for his opportunity but between all this pandemic and stuff that's going on. So he's still ready, you know, and Leno's still here, you know, doing an awesome job for us here. So, you know, everything may not plan out the way we want it to, but we still got some great guys here that could possibly be that new era that we're looking for. But like I said, we're not sure, you know, and I can't, you know, count on something that may happen or may not happen. But like I said, we're getting better at understanding each other, learning from each other, getting close to each other. So hopefully it plans out. but. You know, uh, I try not to, to shoot the gun too early. Uh, right now, the, the, I'm just enjoying the process. It's, it's different. In the last three years, it's been a little roller coaster. But, man, you know, when you get that feeling, it's like this really could be it. It's always a good feeling to have. So, And I can honestly say I have that right now. So we'll see how it goes. I'm excited about it. And one more thing. How impressed were you with the offseason work your brother did uh, to become a better pass rusher? I know he linked up with the you know, specialist and worked on that part of his game this offseason. Oh, yeah, I'm proud of him for that. I'm most definitely proud of him because it's, it's tough. You know, you, you go, through this, uh, go through this pandemic, you have an offseason that's a lot longer than for sure any of us expected. You know, uh, my first time going through that, I said, I think the last time it was like this was the lockout year, if I'm not mistaken. I was nowhere near the league around that time. So going through this, you know, people can fall in the wrong direction. All right, well, I'm not going to work out as much. I'm going to try to pull back or I'm going to go too hard. I feel like he did really well with coming to a, a common balance when it comes to working out, work on his pass rushing, work on the things that he got to get better at. So he gained some weight, which is really good, but really good weight. His pass rush skills, he, he started figuring out moves that's going to work for him. You know, he's seen, he watched a couple guys, like, it's just, I'm really proud of him because he really took this in his own hands. He's like, you know what, I'm going to be better for this team this year. And I watched him every single day work his butt off to try to get to a point where he's at, just to have an opportunity that he well deserved coming into this year. So uh, I'm definitely proud of him, but it's, it's been cool to see. It's been really cool to see because he's he coming to his own. You know, the maturity level of it, you can see it. There's going to be a different player this year. Thanks, man. No doubt. All right, Tim Cook. Hey, Chuck, I know it's only been a couple of days, but what are you thinking on the field? But do you have a feel for what Jamal is going to add to that secondary and maybe what are some of the unique things that stand out about him just from what you've seen so far? Uh, it's a different type of energy. When it comes to Jamal, uh, me, actually, me and Quandre were talking about it the other day. It's like you have to be ready to come play with Jamal because he's a different type of vibe, a different type of energy. He's always going to be ready. So as a, as a defense, as a secondary, we all want to be able to match that. So we were talking about that, which is really cool because we need that in that secondary. And uh, with this secondary now, it's more relatable. You know, everybody closer to the round, the same age. So like I said, that's even better when you can get closer to the guys you're playing with. You know, it's definitely relatable. And the things he can bring is, you know, we got a person who loved the blitz. He know, to, he know how to hit home, but he know how to cover a lot of ground. Person we can put in the box is going to tackle. We know he's going to do that. But understand, he got so much range to the point where we can be able to play for each other. You know, I know for a fact if there's plays that we feel like we can talk about that he can make plays on, we'll make it. If it's times where I feel like I don't have the best rep, he's going to be there. So when you have that type of vibe with your safety, as a corner, 
that feels great. I don't care what nobody say as a as a corner with a presence with Quandre Diggs and Jamal as on the back. You're going to feel a lot more comfortable. So, uh, man, his presence is just it's everything that we need in the secondary. So, man, he's going to add a lot. You know, like I said, we're only a couple days in, like you said. So it's going to be cool to see. But as of right now, I'm feeling great with them guys behind me. So definitely. Hi, Shaquille. How are you doing? I late, so tell me a buzz off. You already been asked this question. <laughs> uh, your contract situation, I don't remind you of that. Have they talked to you, and what do you think the chances are of you being in Seattle beyond this season? Um, not something we talked about. I'm, I'm pretty sure my agent, maybe they did, but um, that's something that I try to keep away from me. Um, I did kind of answer this uh, earlier, but uh, <laughs> one thing was, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I can I can kind of uh, relate to it just a little bit, give you some some insight. But um, um, hopefully I'm around, you know, but I feel like the main thing is just trying to win. Uh, the main thing I can focus on is this year, and this year we're trying to go all the way. You know, through this pandemic, everything that's going on, we want to show other teams that we're, we'll, we will be ready as a whole. As an organization, we will be ready. So when it comes to the contract stuff, everybody know, you know, matter if the 12s, the coaches, the organization, the owners, they know I love Seattle. I love being here. It's been a wonderful time so far. I'd love to be here forever, but some things you just, it's out of your control. Um, at any day, I know it's a business, and I can only focus on the things I can focus on. That's playing great and helping this team win ball games and get to the Super Bowl. So besides that, it's going to play itself out. They know the love I have for Seattle, and hopefully I'm still around. But for right now, I'm just going to help this team win. What, what kind of home have you found here? You know, going across the country, away from the for one year anyway. Yeah. What kind of home does Seattle become? So my situation has been different. So I stayed in Florida my whole life. Went to school at UCF, and it didn't go as well as I thought it was going to go. Um, I had some really rough coaches, had a really rough past coming from my college days, and I came here and found everything that I was looking for. So if everybody know, at UCF, Scott Frost came my last year, showed me a different insight, the way coaches work. You know, not more of the, you know, the call you out your name, but he more of a player coach. And I noticed I always been a guy growing up. If you just tell me what I did wrong, I'm going to get it right. You don't have to yell. There's nothing like that. And Scott Frost showed me that for the first time. And then coming here, I felt that same vibe just from my older coach. And Pete Carroll showed me that the love that I got here was something that I always look for. You know, when you go to college, you always say you're looking for a home. I found my home in Seattle before I did in college. So that's why I said, you know, I, I love being here because Pete Carroll and his organization is everything that I needed. You know, he came here. The first thing he said was be yourself. Show your personality, let it show. You don't have to hide. In Seattle, I had to. Not in Seattle, but in, at UCF, I had to. I was forced to cut my hair at one point. I don't know what dreads got to do with football, but it happened. You know, so you come here, and he said, just let it show. That's all I could ever ask for. And that's, that's a true home to me. That's the type of love they showed me. So that's the home that I found. Any home that you can be yourself in is truly a home. So that's what I found here in Seattle. Thank you. Uh, hey, Shaquille, just wanted to know, uh, how, how difficult is it going to be to uh, get that physical part of the cornerback position without maybe getting some early games in preseason and, and all of that part of it? Um, it's going to be tough, but at the end of the day, you got to rely on competing. The stuff that you worked on during this offseason, and hopefully it shows. So it's going to be tough because it's nothing better than game reps. No matter what it is, ain't nothing better than game reps, going full speed, kind of getting the feel for it. But at the end of the day, you got to adjust. The same way everybody's starting to adjust to everything that's happening in our society right now, you just got to adjust. So when it comes to when the first game, the season right now, I'm taking these reps in camp very serious. I'm going against the guys like I never met them before. I want to compete. I need them to make me better. I want them to try to win. I want them to try to beat me so I can be ready for the game. If, if I lose here, that's okay because I don't want to lose in the game. So teach me. Help me get better. And that's the type of approach that we have to take. So when it comes to game situation, we already been through it. And at the end of the day, we're going to adjust. You know, I'm not going to sit there in the game and be like, oh, I got beat. Man, if I would have had some preseason game, I, I would, that wouldn't happen. No, I'm going to adjust so it doesn't happen again. So that's all it's about. You just got to adjust. You got to be ready for it. But I feel like everything that we, we put in so far, we're going to be ready. We're for sure going to be ready. Is there a part of your game that you might have to you know, focus on, whether it's the tackling or – uh, the, the bump and run or anything like that you might have to just fo focus on? The main thing I got to focus on when the ball is in the air and I got a chance to catch it, make the play. 
<laughs> I need to make the play. No more dropping the ball or and it's some and it's some where it just you can't make the play, you can punch it out. But the ones that I can make, I have to make. So going into this camp, if I see the ball in the air, I'm going to try to catch it every single time. I got to be more consistent with that. So um, I feel like that's the main thing I'm focusing on. That and just being consistent with my press. When I get fatigued, so I tell my technique go out the door. So I want to focus on that. But the main thing is getting the ball in my hand and holding it. I just got to hold it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Brady Henderson. Hi, Zach. Uh, I think you kind of just answered my question. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what, what do you feel like the next step in your evolution is as a cornerback? Uh, getting the ball. I feel like my uh, my last year, I was working on more off man. It's a lot better this year. Uh, one thing uh, was a lot better than last year was my tackling. I continue to fo always focus on tackling. Uh, press coverage, it was good, but it can be more consistent. On the on the them, them third, fourth quarters, when you have them them twelve to fourteen play drives. Things start to get a little sticky. I want to be able to fight through those adversities and be able to still work my technique. And then, like I said, when the opportunity is in front of me take full advantage and get that ball in my hands and hold it. I had too many situations where the ball was in my hands, then it slips out. I just got to be able to hold on just a little bit longer. So that's things I'm working on, tacking the ball at highest point and making the plays that I can make. It, and along those same lines, you know, with three interceptions right now in, in three seasons, is there a part of you that feels like you could actually be better off waiting to do a contract next year? You know, if you have a big season and then you're in a better position next year than you would be this year? No doubt, but with the contract stuff, whenever it comes, it comes. Uh, I know one thing that I was taught, my dad taught me, never count eggs and not in your basket. So I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I deserve this, or I'm going to get that. I'm just here to play, play games and win. That's all I want to do. As long as I'm winning, I'm perfectly fine. Whenever the contract comes, I'll be ready for it. But until then, I just want to win. And, and one more, how do you balance the need to – or the, you know, the desire to make plays on the ball, but also to not get beat deep. Obviously, that's you know the, the cardinal sin in Pete Carroll's yeah. defense. How do you balance that idea? Because it, sometimes it seems like they can be at odds with each other. Just know the plays you can make. Every play is not for you. I noticed that in some plays that you feel like is there, it may not really be there. So they, they, they told me, if you ever feel like something is too easy, it's probably not that easy. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to start jumping routes. That play that's on the top of the ball, when I'm on top of the receiver, if that ball's in the air and I can make it, I'm going to make it. If it's a comeback that I know that he just broke on and the ball is in the air and I can get to it, I'm going to try to make it. But it's ones where I'm a step behind, where I know ah, I got to play the hands, punch it out, I'm going to punch it out. You just got to know your battles. You know which ones you can win and which ones you may lose on. And the ones I may lose on, I'm probably going to punch the ball out. But um, like I said, when the opportunity comes, I don't know. And I'm going to definitely go for the ball. Thank you. No doubt, no doubt. All right, last one for Ben. Shaq, uh, you know, Trey, uh, I know in the past you've said uh, you and Shaquem are, are really close to Trey Flowers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, uh, Trey and Shaquem were in the same draft class. There, there were a lot of kind of criticisms uh, about Trey's game at the, at the end of last season, just with, you know, I, I think with the, you know, the divisional round game against the Packers and whatnot. I guess how would you kind of assess the, the season that he had last year and 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 you, you kind of get a sense that he's eager to kind of uh, take that next step uh, this year? Yeah, knowing Trey, the, the main thing is I feel like he was very productive last year, more than people would like to bring up. But when you leave a game, the last game of the season, you, you leave a bad taste in people's mouth. So I totally understand. Because the main thing people say about Trey is the last game. Green Bay, that's the first thing everybody bring up. And that's why he's so eager, because the only thing he know is that last game was what really people was thinking about. And I think about the, the four interceptions that he had, all the tackles he had, the, the pass deflections that he had. He had a lot of production. People not bringing that up because of what he did in Green Bay. So he's eager to make up for that. And I felt that before because you talk about my second year, leaving Dallas, it was a bad taste in everybody's mouth. <laughs> Came back the next year, showed my worth, and now I just got to continue to build off that. So I know that feeling when it comes like, damn, I just got to hear him get back out there. You know, he's anxious. It's going to happen. As a person he is, the person who loves to compete, a person who loves to win, no one wants to feel like that for an offseason this long. It's tough for anybody. So he's going to be a different player. And actually, this offseason, I went to go train with Trey personally. So we got with our DB coach, and it was just me and him. 
And like I said, he is a different person. So um, I already know this. I'm excited for you guys to see it. It's going to be a different ball player. I can tell you that much. No doubt. All right, thank you guys, and thank you, Shaq. No doubt, no doubt. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Shaq. All right.